Good evening, everyone. We have a wonderful program ahead of us. I want to acknowledge the highly valued alumni and friends of Queens College who have joined us here virtually. Your enduring support is so critical to our mission. I'd like to thank Lori Dorf, Vice President for Institutional Advancement, and her whole team for their endless reserves of energy and resourcefulness during this especially challenging time. I'm also deeply grateful to Lee Fensterstock, Chair of the Queens College Foundation and his fellow board members, who went far beyond their customary generosity to create the Critical Needs Fund. Later tonight, Lee will tell you more about that fund and how it is helping our deserving students cope with unprecedented circumstances. I have yet to have the pleasure to attend in person any of the events put together by Ifat and Terry, Director of Development Events. Tonight, she has virtually outdone herself. I'm proud of all that the college has accomplished in the past 84 years. I'm even more excited about what we will accomplish in the future. Good evening. My name is Christian Mark Gibbs, and I'm an alumni from the class of 2014. I received my bachelor's from the Aaron Copeland School of Music, and I have since gone on to sing at the Metropolitan Opera, be on stages at Lincoln Center Theater, Carnegie Hall, and stages across the country. And that is due in part to my foundation set here at Queens College. It has also been a very difficult year for us performers who use their craft to perform for audiences like yourself. We haven't been able to do that, but I have very, very high hopes for a brighter future and that I will be on this stage performing for you all once again very soon. What you're about to see is an excerpt from Ragtime the Musical. It was a fan film that was created by director Achille Dupont with actress Lauren Lott and myself. In this scene, Wheels of a Dream, co-host Walker Jr. and Sarah both sing about a dream that they wish that their son will be able to ride on. I hope that you enjoy this excerpt and encourage you to watch the full film online. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Ragtime. <laughs> oh. You polishing that car so high, there ain't gonna be nothing left for us to ride home in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you left. Do it. You'll see. This is no ordinary car, Sarah. This car is gonna take us to a better day and a better time. Imagine that. Imagine what this child's life can be. Oh, 
Yes, the wheels are turning for us, girl And the times are starting to roll Any man can get where he wants to If he's got some fire in his soul We'll see justice, Sarah And plenty of men who will stand up And give us our due More than promises, Sarah, it must be true. A country that lets a man like me own a car, raise a child, build a life with you. I'm a Queens College alumni, and I was the recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award. And I just wanted to share with all the student body that, you know, life switches courses on you when you least expect it. And on one random Tuesday afternoon, when life bites you on the butt and what you thought was going to be isn't anymore, that's when you have to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and play the hand that's been dealt you. Play it as courageously and elegantly as you possibly can. So nobody likes that there's a pandemic. It's hard enough being a college student without the pandemic, but it is what it is. And we have to just understand and have faith that every dark cloud has a silver lining and everything that's presented to each of us is an opportunity on our journey of self-refinement. So, I love Queens College. I love the campus. I love the view of Manhattan. I love the student union. I love my classes. And most of all, I loved that it was an inclusive school of a diverse body of students and that there was a great effort to not make any particular group or person feel marginalized. So that's really cool. All right, take care of yourselves. Be well. Hang in. What? My name is Lori Dorf, and I am delighted to serve as the Vice President for Institutional Advancement and Executive Director of the Queens College Foundation. I am proud to be part of an outstanding institution that has transformed the lives of so many deserving students. On behalf of the college, I would like to thank all of our donors who have given so generously to the Critical Needs Fund and are here with us tonight to celebrate our 2021 gala. To those who have given leadership gifts or have given as benefactors, patrons, or angel investors, your extraordinary support is deeply appreciated. Every gift helps our students achieve their goals and realize their full potential. Your philanthropy opens doors of opportunity for our students and gives them the support they need to lead successful lives. Once again, thank you for your compassion and leadership during these challenging times.
let's face it, I'm here most likely because Jerry Seinfeld is out of your price range. But I am very happy that that's the case because it gave me occasion to uh, put on something besides a sweatshirt and sweatpants. And uh, I basically still fit my clothes, which is, uh, so this is already working out well. I got a sense of, of where I'm at. I am a stand-up comedian. I got my degree in stand-up comedy. No, that's not true. Do you guys have a comedy department now? You might. You might. I graduated from Queens College in 1992 with a degree in elementary education. And I uh, got my master's from Queens College in 1994. So pretty quick turnaround, I would say. Pretty decent student. And now here I am, a married man with uh, a 15-month-old son. And my wife is pregnant right now. And due, she was due yesterday. So as I'm recording this, she is downstairs. <laughs> Very pregnant, so if I have to run out, that's, you'll understand why. No, I told her, this Queens College comes first, all right? The baby can wait. So she assured me that she will not go into labor as I record this. But yes, my wife, that, that is not a joke. We are expecting our second. She was, she was at that very, she's a day, she was due 420. I was all prepared to celebrate, but that did not happen, uh, probably for the best. So now... Uh, it, it, we're going to see when the baby decides to come. But my wife is, she's got that, uh, I, I call her the sheriff. She kind of she kind of waddles in and kicks the door open. She's like, you pick up them cleaning supplies we talked about? I'm like, y yeah, sheriff, I, I, I got everything, everything asked for, I, I promise. She's like, I don't want no trouble. I, nor do I, sheriff. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the peace. <laughs> she's, uh, she's intimidating my wife. Uh, but it is very exciting uh, to, to be a father and to have a second on the way. And it is fun having babies around, you know, like we, we've got my son and another on the way. Because you, you, say, you say things to babies that you would not say to anyone else. In fact, uh, it would be problematic if you did. You'd probably be brought into court like, uh, is it not true that you said, and I quote, I will eat your face, yes I will, num num num, yes I will. Uh, yes, I, I did say that, but uh, to be fair, it is out of context, Your Honor. It continues, I want those cheeks, give me those cheeks, I must have those cheeks, num num num. Yes, all of that is true, uh, but to be fair, you really have to see his cheeks there. There's something to see. <laughs> so it's an exciting time, uh, getting more exciting all the time. Thank goodness for my Queens College education that prepared me for all of it. Well, thank you so much, everyone. That is not bad for a man in an empty room. But truly, I am thrilled uh, to be part of the gala celebration. As I was telling the committee, I have so many fond memories at Queens College and certainly uh, put me in good position to begin my life as a teacher and to leave teaching almost immediately, <laughs> five years later, and become a stand-up comedian. Good evening. I'm Lee Fensterstock, Chair of the Queens College Foundation. On behalf of all my foundation colleagues, let me welcome you to the college's 30th annual gala. I offer my deepest thanks to all of you for being here to support the wonderful students of Queens College. Even though we're not in a grand Manhattan ballroom as we might have been in years past, we're all here connected virtually. And if there is a silver lining, the technology has enabled us to reach a much larger Queens College community than we could have in a traditional setting. We have much to be proud of and thankful for, particularly after a uniquely challenging year. The COVID-19 pandemic had a significant impact on all members of the college community. A recent study looking at the pandemic's impact shows just how much our students have been affected. 50% lost their jobs in the shutdown. 71% have experienced challenges such as the lack of access to the internet, lack of childcare, 
and the responsibility of caring for sick family members. 40% are feeling an overwhelming amount of stress and anxiety. To address this situation, in January, the Queens College Foundation Board of Trustees allocated $2.75 million in support of need-based student scholarships, the Knights Table Food Pantry, tech internships at the college's tech incubator, and graduate student recruitment. Combined with funding from other sources, this one-time supplemental infusion of funds will reach $3 million and will help counter the difficult financial circumstances faced by many undergraduate students as a result of the pandemic. This is intended to ensure that undergraduate students who might not otherwise be able to continue with their studies are appropriately supported and able to achieve their educational objectives. Most of the foundation's emergency support is earmarked for Queens College scholarships. They are being issued for spring, summer, and fall of 2021. The awards are being made consistent with CUNY financial aid policies. Athletic scholarship obligations are being supported as well, with further funding allocated to address pandemic-related expenses as competition resumes. This support will further advance the Queens College Foundation's pandemic relief efforts on behalf of our students, begun last spring with the establishment of the Critical Needs Fund. As a proud alumnus, I believe this response is emblematic of the Queens College community at its best, and I am confident we will emerge from this crisis an even stronger community. We all know firsthand the professional and personal value of a Queens College degree. We are eager to ensure that our students will not be precluded from this important personal achievement. As our country begins to recover from the pandemic's grip, it's their talents that will be needed to help rebuild our economy. We support the efforts of President Wu and his team to help assure greater student retention and graduation. I want to extend my appreciation to all of you for your past and continuing contributions and support. Because of you, Queens College can continue nurturing and producing the future teachers, business leaders, artists, civic leaders, scientists, doctors, and many others our city and state depends upon. Thank you so much. Thank you for making a difference. Queens College has helped me to build my future because they have just provided so many fulfilling opportunities that I wouldn't have been able to get anywhere else. Queens College has probably been the best time of my life. It's been an amazing ride being a student here and I'm definitely going to miss it. Queens College has been a unique place for me to develop as a professional and athlete. Queens College is really wanted us to kind of like hone our crafts. You get an idea, don't just stick with that idea. Think critically about it. Try to find innovative or creative ways to push certain ideas. Something that's near and dear to me that I appreciate and respect about Queens College is that they genuinely care. I was born in Brooklyn, raised in Far Rockaway. We grew up in poverty. Although that was the case, it never really felt that way because my mom works extra hard, single parent household, to kind of provide a lifestyle that she couldn't have. Speaking on behalf of the people who don't have anyone to speak for them is imperative. I am from Pereira, Colombia. I came to the United States six years ago and I decided to get my higher education and have the opportunity to be bilingual. I am thankful with Queens College and with their administration. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to like finish my semester. Not only my semester, but I'm here. I'm graduating. It was actually my first time overseas, so I had no idea what to expect. 
We visited five different cities. We went to Beijing, Xi'an, Nanjing, Suzhou, and Shanghai. We were there when the coronavirus was like silently spreading. We got back like January 21st, which is like only a few days before when they started to lock down China. So we were really lucky to like have gotten home safe and healthy. Queens College has been my home away from home. I have made incredible friendships here and I've received opportunities that I don't know that I would have gotten if I had gone somewhere else. And it's become such a big facet of my life and it will certainly be sad to leave that. I've really loved my time here. I've met so many wonderful people and I just feel like everyone has a story to tell. Queen's College had given me the necessary skills to continue building my future to be a better professional and athlete as well. I love how Queen's College's motto is we learn so that we may serve. I've really been able to reflect on my life and like what I want to accomplish in life. And ultimately it's really just to bring a positive impact to the people around me and to be able to serve people with like a willing heart. Queen's College was the best decision I could have possibly made. I don't regret it, ever. Today, let me explain a little bit about why I came here and what I hope to do. I was attracted to Queen's College because of the diversity of the borough. We're the most diverse place on the face of the planet. And because at Queen's College, we still believe in the power of higher education as the engine of the American dream. Our motto as an institution is we learn so that we may serve. My personal motto is I serve so that our students may learn. As you know, a liberal arts education is central to our mission. It provides students with a well-rounded education that will best prepare them for the multitude of opportunities and challenges that lie ahead. To that end, we hope to start a business school and an art school to meet the needs of students and the demands of the marketplace. We'll advocate together for the funding our students deserve. Both the business and the art school will offer opportunities to communities and individuals that have been underserved and historically excluded in business and the arts, not to mention arts administration. The marketplace is so demanding. The standards keep going up. Now, it's not enough for many jobs to have an undergraduate degree. You need the graduate degree too. We can offer it in a more effective manner because the programs we have are so successful. If you can do just a little bit more, a little bit faster, you'll come out with that competitive edge. Our career placement is enhanced by the CUNY Initiative, working with major employers in the New York City metro area. I want to look at how we can enhance the certificates and micro-credentials as well. Our goal is to train people to be productive and fulfilled within this ever-changing economy of ours. Let me turn then to the budget for a moment. We need to advocate together. We have the same goal, though maybe different tactics. Public higher education, it's not charity. It's an investment in us as an institution, in our students. It's actually those students who are the most effective messengers because they're the constituents of the public officials whom we need to persuade. There's been a change over the past couple of generations. What we once took for granted, we can't anymore, that everyone should have the opportunity to earn a Queens College degree. Well, some people are pessimists. They don't embrace that public good as much as I know all of us do. As our graduates go on to create small businesses, they employ people, whether or not those individuals were our graduates. So Queens College contributes to the economy for all. Most of our budget comes from the state of New York, so we need to persuade those folks in Albany, many of them are already our friends, that this is a worthwhile endeavor to support. At every opportunity, I meet with government leaders on the federal, state, and local level to advocate for funding on your behalf. Private philanthropy is so indispensable. It's a supplement, not a substitute, to the public funding. Our institutional advancement, they're terrific. I've been in higher education leadership going on 11 years now. I've never seen a better team. They raise 12 to $13 million per year. 
That's what enabled the Queens College Foundation, run by an independent board, to allocate emergency resources, a total of $3 million. They've never done that before. We all owe them a debt of gratitude. As we know, some among us suffer from food insecurity. We know that our students, by and large, don't come from backgrounds of great privilege. But if we enable them, if we empower them, not crush them under student debt, they will go on to the greatest success. They will achieve aspirations that aren't just for them. These are the aspirations of grandparents and parents who risk peril to journey to a new world. They're the aspirations of an entire community who sees the first generation go off to college. That's why diversity, equity, and inclusion are so important. It's a personal priority of mine. I've been associated in my career with an historically black institution, a unique school for the deaf, and worked as an advocate for the undocumented and participated in decisions recognizing gay equality and gender equity. That isn't enough though. I'm here because this is what Queens College is all about. We have always been about diversity, equity, and inclusion long before it became a fashionable buzzword. So Queens College, I know it's the place for me. Let me turn to the pandemic. I'm actually glad to have started my job when we face such a clear external threat. We realize we have no choice but to cooperate. Queens College has a role to play, a vital role in the rebuilding process. For the summer, we've already announced we will remain virtual. In fall 2021, we'll start back in person. We'll be guided by the science and safety, and we'll ensure that for our students, what we've learned during the pandemic uh, about education, virtual education. We'll take the best of that and offer multiple options to them. Many of you I have met, some of you I haven't met yet. I strive to meet every member of the faculty and staff and every student who crosses my path, and I mean meet in person, not on a screen. This will have to do for now. And I'm just like you, a child of newcomers who believed in the American dream, empowered by higher education. This is what I want to do within our community. We've been tested. We've survived. Now we must help our students to thrive. Thank you so much. Hello, Queens College. This is Jerry Seinfeld from the class of 1976. And Every memory I have of being at Queens College is a good one. Queens was the greatest place for me. My whole life started when I began attending Queens College. I love the school. I love the teachers. I love the borough of Queens. I grew up on Long Island. When I came to Queens, I went, oh, my God, this is what life is supposed to be like. All different kinds of people and different backgrounds. And the best thing in Queens College was the kids that went there. They were cool. They were smart. They knew about the city. They knew about the world. They knew about culture. And I just could never uh, repay what Queens College did for me. Love Queens College. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the passing of Louis Armstrong, the world-renowned trumpet player and vocalist who had hit records such as What a Wonderful World and Hello Dolly and West End Blues. What you might not know is that the Louis Armstrong House and the archives, which are located on campus at Rosenthal Library, have been part of the Queens College family since 1986. The Louis Armstrong House Museum is located in Corona, Queens. It's the house where Louis Armstrong lived for the last 28 years of his life. It is a National Historic Landmark. When Lucille Armstrong died in 1983, she left the house to the city of New York. And the city of New York said someone needs to run this thing. Columbia was interested. Brandeis had been wooing Lucille Armstrong for years. But it was Queens College that really made a play for it. Hall of Fame saxophonist Jimmy Heath, who was running the jazz program on campus, and Howard Brofsky, an incredible trumpet player who was also teaching at Aaron Copeland School of Music, and college president Shirley Strum Kenny joined forces and convinced DCA and the Armstrong estate that Queens College would be the perfect home for the archives and to administer the house. In 1987, Queens College threw an outdoor event at the Louis Armstrong House to announce the partnership between the Armstrong House and Archives and the college. 
Trumpet players, young and old, from Wynton Marsalis to Roy Eldridge to Dizzy Gillespie, played Louis Armstrong's trumpets in the garden, and it was a real watershed moment to let people know that Louis Armstrong's legacy would now be part of Queens College's future. The core of the archives is Louis Armstrong's personal collection, including over 85 scrapbooks, 500 books, 270 big band arrangements, 5,000 photographs, 2,000 records, and really the crown jewel, over 700 reel-to-reel -reel tapes. Now, the outside of the tape boxes are artworks. Louis Armstrong would cut up news clippings, photographs, anything he could find, and make collages. And those collages have been shown around the world. They're stunning. But the actual content of the tapes, you're basically hanging out with Louis Armstrong. He would just hit record and get him and his wife talking about music, him and his friends talking about jokes, whatever was going on. If you've never heard any of these tapes, I picked one of my favorite clips for tonight. This is Louis and Lucille at home in Corona, 1956. Listen as Louis gives the date, and Lucille, the helpful wife, is there to correct him twice. Long Island, New York, February 26th. 1956. February 6th. Correction. February 6th, 1926. I've said that we have a Lucy and she's fixed. 1956. Well, <laughs> pardon me, folks. Lucy, you're messing with my eye, you know. Jelly, jelly roll. 30 years later, the Louis Armstrong Archives has grown into the world's largest archives for a single jazz musician. On top of our 12 research collections, we also have Louis Armstrong's house, which opened as a museum in 2003. We are now on the precipice of a really exciting event, the opening of the Louis Armstrong Center later in 2021. Under the stewardship of our dynamic new executive director, Regina Bain, we are poised to open up this new center that will have a 70-seat room for concerts, lectures, film screenings. It will have a state-of-the-art exhibit area curated by Jason Moran. And the second floor will be the new permanent home of the Louis Armstrong Archives. Now, even though the archives are technically leaving campus, we will always be part of the Queens College community. Queens College students will always be encouraged to visit the new center, to do research at the new center, Personally, I've been very fortunate to teach a Music of Louis Armstrong course here on campus since 2015. Dozens of Queens College students have passed through the course and have given tours at the Armstrong House, have helped with our education initiatives, have even performed at our museum. And I look forward to continuing that relationship between the Louis Armstrong House and Archives and the Aaron Copeland School of Music for years to come. Hello, I'm Juliet Papa, 1010 Winds reporter and Queens College class of 1978. It's my pleasure to be with you tonight. I've covered mayors and governors and I've reported the news for all five boroughs, but I trace my journalism career back to its roots right here at Queens College, where I wrote and reported the news at our own WQMC. New York's been my beat ever since, and I never forget that it started here at Queens College. I hope you're enjoying this wonderful presentation and I'm excited to introduce our next segment featuring President Wu and another distinguished Queens College alumna, renowned chef, restaurateur, and author, Lydia Bastianich. Lydia's story is incredible. As a child, she was a refugee from communism and an immigrant to America. She became a resident of Queens and a student at Queens College and her restaurant empire launched right here in Queens. Not only does she share her story, Lydia also gives President Wu a few hints on how to spice up his pasta game. Here's Frank and Lydia. Lydia, it's great to meet you today. I'm cooking from the Finesse Kitchen and Food Lab in Remsen Hall. You might remember it as the old science building from when you were on campus. Uh, it's a wonderful 2,000 square foot facility, much bigger than the kitchen in my apartment or in any New York City apartment. And it's just great to be on our beautiful campus. Well, thank you, Frank. Thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me. And you know, as we say in Italian, buongiorno a tutti. It's such a pleasure to connect with a place that I hold dear in my heart. This college was part of my growing up and my fulfilling my dream. Tell me a little bit about your story. I understand that your family fled a communist regime, leaving Trieste in 1956. Uh, yes, my story is I was born in Istria. Istria is a little peninsula northeast of Venice. After World War II, that 
part of Italy, Istria was uh, given by the Paris Treaty to the newly formed communist Yugoslavia. There was an exodus of 350,000 ethnic Italians going back into Italy and into the world. When in Italy, we didn't have a passport, we were uh, refugees, and we ultimately ended up in a refugee camp. We lived there for two years, awaiting an opportunity. America accepted us in 1958, and it was the greatest day. You are welcome. That's a, a wonderful story. We're so glad you made it here. That's the story of so many of us in the borough of Queens and on the campus at Queens College. When you arrived here, you grew up in Astoria and Bayside, and then you came here to Queens College. You must have seen so many changes over the years. Queens is the most diversified place in all of the United States as far as ethnicity. We have everybody here and made friendships. I went to school there. Uh, I met uh, my husband there. We opened uh, our first restaurant in 1971 in Forest Hills. We moved to Bayside and uh, we had our second restaurant, uh, Villa Secondo, right on Horace Harding, not too far from, from the college. I took classes at Queens College. So I feel, I feel very close and very grateful. And I had uh, kind of being a mother and and working, and in between finding the time to enrich myself at Queens College. So many of our students are entrepreneurs and parents, even as their students. What advice do you have for them? Make sure you prepare yourself, get instructed, you know, learn as much as you can. As you see, I went back to take classes because I felt I needed some things. And then, you know what, uh, Frank, roll your sleeves and work. All right, I'm going to roll my sleeves up so that we can cook. So you are making bocatina alla matriciana, a simple Roman dish. Did you look over the the recipe? Uh, yes, but I'll need your help. All right, so you need a bacon, which you have there. Now you could use uh, bacon. Guanciale is traditionally used, which is guancia is the cheek, is the jowl the jowl of the pig, but you have that. We need to begin with the onions. You have the water. Do you have the fire on the water? Uh, yes, uh, I need to turn up the oh, water. Okay. So let's begin with the onions. Clean the onions. Take the small, take the paring knife. Okay, that's the paring knife. Now peel off the dry skin. Don't be afraid. Get in there. Do it. That's <laughs> All right, like this. There we go. That's it. And just cut slices, moon slices, not, not too thick. I'm not going to win any of those speed contests that I see on uh, social media where those chefs try to cut as fast as possible. Okay. No, no, you're doing good. You're doing good. So, so now we're going to put a little bit of oil in the saute pan. Go ahead. Go. I'll tell you when to stop. A few spoonfuls. Go ahead. Go, 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 go. Okay. That's it. You can put the bacon in now. You, sometimes you can put the onion but I think I like to render the bacon first. Okay, let's render the bacon. Here we go. Okay. All right. You have a wooden spoon there someplace? That's it, spread right. it with, out. With confidence, okay. All right, there you go. And common sense. All right. So. All right, I have one, but not the other. Which pasta are you using? Okay, so the bucatini is a thick spaghetti with a buco, which is a hole. It has a hole in the middle. And it's a wonderful pasta because the sauce goes in there. As kids, we used to kind of slurp it up and it used to kick the sauce right in our nose or in our faces. <laughs> Raise the heat on the bacon. I don't hear the bacon going. Okay, we want to hear the bacon, okay. All right, so now you can put the sliced onions in there. Sprinkle a little bit of salt, not too much because bacon has salt. Now you put the pepperoncino, the red crushed pepper. Okay. There we go. Well, what are you doing? Oh. Too much. Oh. What do you think, dish? Uh, it, it, it'll be extra spicy. No, that's a lot of pepperoncino. I, 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 I love it spicy. Is, is that too much? Okay. All right. That's too hot. Go in with your hands. Don't worry about it. Go in with your hands and take some out. You're not going to burn yourself. All there right, you all go. All right. All right. There too much you pepper, go. too much pepper. <laughs> okay. All right, Lydia, I'm having fun here. Sorry to scare you, you with the how pasta? much pepper. 
<laughs> Did you mix yes. the pasta? I just mixed the pasta. Good, good. Lydia, I understand that you've even cooked for the Pope. Uh, tell us about that. Right. Two popes, not one. Pope Benedict and Pope Francis when they were here for a visit. Pope Francis, when we were here finished lunch, he sneaked down in the kitchen and came down the hallway and he peeked in and he said, can I have coffee with you? Posso avere café con voi? And, you know, we almost all dropped to the floor. He was there just like one of us. And he had coffee with us. He blessed everything. So it was extraordinary. Now let's go to the tomatoes. Now pull up your right hand sleeve a little bit. And now go in the tomatoes and squash them. All right, squash the tomatoes. Okay, I've washed my hands very thoroughly. I saw and that. And squashing the tomatoes. All right. This is easy, fast, the old-fashioned way. I think if you have kids in the in the in the kitchen with you, they love doing that. You know, it's important that, that kids get <laughs> okay. into into cooking. We need plenty of tomatoes, otherwise those peppers are going to overwhelm. Them. All right. That Both looks the good. Squash tomatoes. Uh huh. There we go. Okay, the tomatoes are in. Okay. Now give it give it a good mix. Okay, so get a ladle of the pasta water, the boiling pasta water, and put it in the sauce because it seems, you know, it looks dense. Put it right in the sauce. That's it. One. Put another one. And in the meantime, mix the pasta. Since the pasta is almost there, what I would do is that I would pick up the pasta right from that pan and put it right into the sauce and let it finish cooking in the sauce. Okay. All right, here we go. Do not rinse the pasta. Go ahead, right. go, go. Okay, go, 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 go. go. All right. right in. Here we right go. In. There we go. Mix it nice, mix it nice. Let it cook together. That's it. Leave it uncovered so that the sauce densens up. Okay. This looks like it will serve a whole family, how much we've made here. Mmm, it tastes great. I can really taste that tomato. Yeah? It's spicy. <laughs> it's a good thing you took, you took half of it out. Let's get in there with the tongue. Pick up, pick up the pasta. That's it. That's it. Confident tongue use. Okay. Cheese is, is almost a cured element, so if you cook it, it divides. You don't want to cook it. You just want to get the maximum of the flavor and the aroma without really cooking it. Go ahead, mix it in, mix it in, and then you're ready to, to taste, to plate it for yourself and eat. All right. Okay, I want to make sure I get plenty of those peppers <laughs> since I put them all in there, right? Here we go. That looks beautiful. Great job, Fred. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Now let's, taste it and tell me how it tastes. Let's give this a taste. There's the moment of truth. Absolutely. This is great. Thank you. It's very spicy. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, it's very hot. <laughs> yeah. Well, wow. yeah, you overdid it. You overdid it on I, the I, I need some water. <laughs> you overdid it on those peppers. Pepperoncino. Yes. <clears throat> no, it's, it's very good. I, I will eat this for my lunch. Thank you. Bon appetito. Hey, Ray Romano here. Hello, everyone in Queens, New York. I am a Queens native. I, uh, I'm also a Queens College alumni. Would I say alumni? Is that right? You didn't what? graduate. Okay. My wife uh, was kind enough to remind me that I did not graduate. But that's neither here nor there. What's important is that you people are there helping out, helping out the students who are uh, going through college during a pandemic, which uh, it shouldn't be. Remember, the, remember our college day? Say hi, Anna. Hi. Oh, look, a wine glass. Yeah. Cheers. That's, uh, that's the same site every night since the pandemic started. 
but who cares about that? What's important is that we help out the students. So congratulations. And listen, uh, one day this will all be over and hopefully I can come back and, and visit my old school. Till then, God bless, good luck, and uh, stay healthy. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. Juliet with you again. I want to thank you for joining us tonight and hope you've enjoyed this 30th annual gala celebration in support of Queens College. I want to thank all the participants who volunteered their time and talents to make this presentation possible. And I want to thank all of you for making the extended Queens College family as dynamic and inspiring as it is. As we've seen tonight, our community is tight-knit, committed, and responsive. And we also do some amazing work on stage, on screen, in the kitchen, and pretty much anywhere we focus our efforts. To close our evening, we have one more special performance by a group of Aaron Copeland School of Music Jazz Choir alumni. They are singing the classic song, You've Got a Friend, written by Queens College alumna Carol King. The singers in the group are jazz singers, classical singers, jazz instrumentalists, and even a couple of non-music majors who sang in the choir during their time on campus. The arrangement is by Aubrey Johnson, a gifted singer, arranger, and composer who's an adjunct faculty member in the Copeland School's jazz department. As we've seen tonight, Queens College boasts an impressive legacy of talented alumni who've gone on to great things. That legacy is perfectly embodied in this performance. We look forward to when we can sing together in person in the very near future. For now, thank you for watching and supporting Queens College. And here is the choir to take us out. Good night, everyone. When you're down